It's a horrible situation in the entire city of Jackson. No water to drink. We can't drink it. I'm not able to cook like I want to cook. We can't brush our teeth with it. I honestly don't even want to bathe my baby in Jackson's water. It's not normal. This is not the first time this has happened. I believe racism plays a big a part of that. So it came to a boiling point, and you see where we are now. But it's good that the federal government's finally getting involved in it, and they're going to fix it. En Estados Unidos lo llamamos Reservoir, el Ross Barnett Reservoir en Jackson. Se supone que abastece a la capital del estado de Mississippi. Pero a finales de agosto, tras las inundaciones, las bombas fallaron y durante una semana no hubo agua. El ejército y los servicios federales de rescate intervinieron y se distribuyeron millones de botellas a las 150.000 personas afectadas. And say that the residents of Jackson are worthy. They are worthy of a dependable system. And we look forward to a coalition of the willing that will join us in the fight to improve this system that has been failing for decades. Today, some seven days later, I'm very happy to report that we have returned water pressure to the city. There may be more bad days in the future. We have, however, reached a place where people in Jackson can trust that water will come out of the faucet, people in Jackson can trust that toilets can be flushed, and people in Jackson can trust that the fires can be fought. La razón por la que el sistema de agua ha colapsado es porque la ciudad ya no puede permitirse mantenerlo. Los impuestos ya no llegan. Jackson ha perdido una cuarta parte de su población desde los años 80, pasando de 200.000 a 150.000 habitantes, dejando miles de casas abandonadas y negocios cerrados. Dos meses después de la crisis, el agua ha vuelto a los grifos, pero sigue sin ser potable y la población, 80% negra, está al límite. People are fed up and they, 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 they just, you know how important it is to have water in your house that are clean. People don't understand why it's been going on so long and, and no, they didn't done nothing about it. What turn it might take, I don't what the people might do at a lower level. It's got to stop. It's got to stop now. Here we go. extraescolar, la máquina que filtra y purifica el agua del grifo está siempre solicitada. El barrio de West Jackson, con una población de 30.000 habitantes, es el foco de todos los problemas. Ellie, de 27 años, es consciente de ello y sabe que la situación es explosiva. We've been pouring water forever. Oh, I mean, it's always been rough. You know, uh, like Jackson has a negative connotation to it um, because of like, the, you know, the crime rate, you know, and all the things that contribute to that, you know, we all know. People definitely need, to, are gonna, it's gonna get to a breaking point uh, where people are just gonna be fed up and tired and just angry and yeah. You know, the unspeakable is gonna be, is gonna happen, you know, so there's a lot of reasons to make revolution. Ellie trabaja in Cooperation Jackson, una asociación de vecinos que es uno de los pocos espacios de vida in West Jackson. La asociación es conocida aquí por su ideología de izquierdas, cercana al movimiento Black Lives Matter. Joshua es su director. Well just um, for security reasons and um Cooperation Jackson is um, a multitude of things, but um, set um, in um, the spirit of 
uh, the New African People's Organization, um, in order to democratize the economy um, and give um, uh, more um, economic prowess to durante la crisis del agua, distribuyeron casi 300.000 botellas en el barrio. And undergird the people that live there. I think that there is a growing popularization of the left, um, but that's that's a popularization in theory, that's a popularization in in name. But I think that the project, like co that, is Cooperation Jackson. I think that the projects across the municipality in Jackson, but also um, that are nationally national. I think that they fortify the left and bring in more opportunities for people to come into the left and understand it. Bonjour, bienvenue to Candles Bakery, Fondren, Mississippi. Fondren es uno de los pocos barrios que intenta sobrevivir. Los restaurantes han comenzado a abastecerse de agua mineral. empresarios que siguen creyendo en ella, como Arden Barnett, organizador de conciertos y festivales. Ready to move because they don't want to live in Jackson anymore. If everyone starts bailing, then you know this will be a ghost town. Hay gente que podría permitirse vivir en otro lugar, pero ha optado por quedarse. Uno de los lugares donde se reúnen es el café Urban Foxes. Los sábados por la mañana hay un mercado de diseño, café expreso orgánico y pasteles veganos. A Mary Adeline y William les gusta este mundo. Están comprometidos con la izquierda, aunque admiten que en este lugar no hay mucha diversidad, solo hay gente blanca. Son conscientes de ello y les gustaría que cambiara. William es un joven abogado que ayuda a los inmigrantes con sus casos. Nos lleva en la vieja camioneta que heredó de su abuelo. La primera parada es el Capitolio, la sede republicana del estado de Mississippi. So there's no doubt in my mind that the Republicans would love to move the Capitol somewhere else. Um, because a lot of these white legislators hate coming to this city. They'd love to pull all of the money out and make their decisions somewhere else in more of a white community because they don't like to come here and see what they've done because three streets over from here from the Capitol building, we can look at some places, some houses that don't have doors on them, you know, that, and they have to see that. They're faced with that every time they come here. Everybody here is fighting to survive every single day. As somebody who is a leftist and has the capabilities to do it, we need to take that fight to the people that can make the decisions that, that impact people's lives that live here. You know, in order to, to fight for people who cannot effectively fight for themselves because they're stuck in these neighborhoods. The city's abandoned, man. This is one of the areas that was affected the most from the lack of water pressure. It's a symbol of a white majority state withholding funding from an 80% black city. And 
they know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. There's, you can make no mistake about it. You know, that it, it's kind of just a, a boiling to the surface of years of neglect and underfunding that was purposeful. You know, they, they want this city to fail. So it's just, uh, it's just another, another symbol of the white supremacy, without a doubt. Porque Jackson es una de esas ciudades que desde hace tiempo está plagada de tensiones raciales. William ha querido llevarnos a la casa de Medgar Evers, activista de los derechos civiles asesinado por el Ku Klux Klan en 1963. El grifo vuelve a tener presión y los vecinos pueden volver a regar sus jardines. We know why this happened. We know why the state is not giving money to Jackson, Mississippi. And I'm an educator here in the state. Yeah. Have been for 26 years. And to see things underfunded, even education and yeah. infrastructure and things like that, it's yeah. it's bad. Things that need the most attention don't get it. That there's no particular hope in any single political party coming to help us. National politics is not on a lot of people's minds here because people are trying to survive every single day. Lejos de la imaginación del pequeño Tom Sayer a orillas del Mississippi, el estado homónimo es hoy uno de los más pobres del país. Parece que pueblos enteros han sido abandonados. La guerra civil todavía está en la mente de la gente de aquí. Este es el sur, tierra de la esclavitud. La segregación está más presente que nunca en la política de Mississippi. La población negra no vota mucho y la población blanca devuelve sistemáticamente a los republicanos al Capitolio. Funcionarios electos muy conservadores, como Lucian Smith, abogado y ex jefe del Partido Republicano del Estado, forman parte del establishment blanco y educado que ha podido viajar a Europa. Moi, j'adore Mississippi. Je, enfin, euh, j'habitais Paris quand j'étais plus jeune. J'ai choisi habiter ici à Jackson parce que c'est chez moi. Je veux être ici. Mais euh, la plupart des gens, quand ils pensent de Mississippi, ils n'ont pas des images très agréables de l'État. Et ils pensent euh, à, à des problèmes dans notre histoire. Et quand il y a des choses comme ça, pour moi, c'est un désastre euh, d'image aussi. Les républicains accusent d'incompétence à les démocrates qui occupent l'ayuntement. Cette crise de l'eau symbolise une de las manifestations de la radicalisation de la vie politique. You used to have moderate Republicans or even liberal Republicans. You used to have moderate Democrats or, or even center-right uh, Democrats. But by and large, I don't think that's something you really see much more. Now, you, there are people on various degrees of the spectrum, and I'm a, a conservative Republican, so I prefer us having conservative Republicans. But I, but I don't think there is nearly as much tolerance of uh, people who are, who are more moderate. And I think that's been a change that's occurred over the course of the last 20 or 30 years in the country. Todas las miradas se dirigen entonces al municipio y a su carismático alcalde, el demócrata Chocue Lumumba. Esta noche encabeza una comitiva, una versión ruidosa y contaminante de la cabalgata. Una vez al año, el alcalde recorre los barrios de Jackson y su trayecto no pasa cuando menos desapercibido. Primera parada, el campus de un instituto. Se abrazan y se felicitan. Están orgullosos de estar al servicio de la población, mayoritariamente negra, al igual que la policía municipal, que destaca su proximidad a los ciudadanos para que la situación no se deteriore más. Uh, like we've seen civil unrest all across America, and I thank God and knock on wood that we didn't have the problems that most cities had. And I believe that that is because 
of our very intimate relationship by knowing the community and loving the community that we serve. And we're here anytime you need us. So God bless you and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Y el alcalde Chopo Lumumba, al que le gusta presentarse como el más izquierdista de Estados Unidos, se niega a asumir la responsabilidad exclusiva de la crisis del agua. I think the, the water crisis uh, further exemplifies why we have to uh, be as, as uh, progressive and as radical as we need to be. Uh, because anytime uh, residents are faced with challenges like this, which are envi environmental justice challenges, uh, we have to be willing to take that on at all costs, uh, take a by any means necessary approach to make sure that we secure the resources that people so desperately need and deserve. More to the left. I think it is more to the left. I, I think that, that continuing to agree uh, to a lack of investment, continuing to agree to marginalize people, leave them in the position that we find Jackson residents and, and so many communities across the nation. Pero mientras el alcalde desfila, los negocios del centro de la ciudad están en declive. La última víctima es Babalú, un restaurante que no ha podido encontrar suficiente personal y que también se siente víctima de la crisis del agua. La panadería-cafetería de Jeff Good ha perdido el 20% de su facturación en los últimos meses. Y para su propietario la situación es ahora peor que durante la pandemia de COVID-19, cuando recibieron apoyo. Para cambiar eso, sus amigos le están empujando a presentarse a la alcaldía. Es demócrata, como el alcalde, pero se presenta como un moderado que teme que la crisis del agua sea asumida por los extremos. Uh, this, is, this is what happens when uh, people don't have control of government and, and private interests or powerful interests have, have, have control. Um, um, racism enters the conversation. And so it, I can see at a national level that our story, and I think this is why we've had so many folks like you come in to, to be curious about this and want to talk. I think at the national level that there's a lot of interest in how this problem can be used to advance a narrative and an agenda. En el barrio ultra chic de Woodland Circle solo hay dos casas habitadas por negros, entre ellas la de Jonathan Lee. Ha decidido retirarse de la política para dedicarse a los negocios y parece que le está funcionando. I live here not because I don't have choices, but because I'm not leaving the city. I'm dedicated to being part of uh, a renaissance for, for this area. So that's why I make my home here. Otro miembro del Partido Demócrata se presentó a la alcaldía, pero fracasó frente a otro demócrata. Ahora ve que algunas ideas de la izquierda están llegando a la Casa Blanca. If you want to talk politics, I've got to have bourbon. Has there been an awakening? Yes. Uh, their extremes are far more extreme than they once were. Um, The, the, I think the fact that Bernie Sanders was a, was a, a candidate that was probably uh, in the top three or four uh, is unthinkable. You know, so I don't, I don't know that we, we would use the word socialism in this country. Um, I, I think socialism is a bit of a taboo word. Now, it's still a bad word, but when, when, there, are, when there are attributes of that socialism, that register with me when it's my daughter that has thousands of dollars uh, in student loan debt, then, okay, this is something I can live with. Can you call it socialism? Absolutely. I don't think they would, though. De cara a las elecciones de mitad de mandato, Joe Biden ha decidido efectivamente perdonar la deuda estudiantil. Es solo un gesto electoral para los que se presentan como socialistas americanos. Incluso aquí, en el sur, los activistas asumen su cercanía al marxismo, Margaret y Will siempre han considerado relevante la obra de Karl Marx, más aún en Estados Unidos. When we were reading this with the chapter, we talked a lot about like how capitalism and how Marx talks about capitalism, kind of just really trying to find like squeeze out the um, like find the margins that it can squeeze out mm. of like 
you know, people working longer and longer hours, um, like at, at what, until people hit their breaking points, um, and it gets as close up to that line as you can to make as much money as you can. Out yeah, of and I think like the recent, you know, uh, increase in unionization efforts uh, really demonstrate that. Uh, uh, as people understand the power of their labor and also come to the point where they can't take being exploited any longer, they start to organize to, uh, uh, you know, actually do something about it. Uh, and that's what's happening in Amazon uh, shops across the country. That's what's happening at Starbucks. Marx can explain a lot of what's going on and a lot more than I think a lot of people, people realize. ¿No existe el riesgo de que esa fractura degenere en disturbios? Para el conjunto de los estadounidenses, la posibilidad de una revuelta violenta es también un tabú. Cuando William y Will formaron su sección local del Partido Socialista Democrático hace dos años, no pensaron que habría tanto de qué preocuparse. La pandemia, la segregación y ahora la falta de agua. Para ellos todo esto podría salir mal, pero lo más importante es que ven que sus argumentos han avanzado. You know, America is a violent society, it always has been, but I don't think much has changed in the mentality of Americans. I think people are just a little bit more open about their violent tendencies. Things are kind of coming to a head. I don't know if like individuals are getting more violent as much as like the state is cracking down on people, but um, uh, Certainly, I think, you know, as somebody who grew up in like the Bush administration, talking about socialist ideals is a lot more uh, acceptable than it was, you know, 20 years ago, let alone 30 years ago, uh, for sure. Cuando Mary Adeline cruzó la terraza del Café Bobo, ella, que se había comprometido con los demócratas tras la elección de Donald Trump en 2016, se sintió decepcionada especialmente con Joe Biden. Ya no milita en el partido, pero su corazón sigue siendo de izquierdas. A falta de algo mejor, votará a un candidato demócrata, pero sobre todo para bloquear a los republicanos. I do feel Orphan. I feel like there were there's two major camps of politics in the U.S. Um, and the Democrats were supposed to be um, the party of the people and who cared about the poor and who cared about the subjected. Um, but the older I get and the more you know, involved I get, or more of a better view that I get, um, they just seem as part of the establishment, all kind of in it for their own good. Um, but then there's the actual leftist people who come up, um, who come up in political campaigns. Uh, but the support for them seems to be so low uh, that it's hard to throw my support behind them when I would rather still have a Democrat than a Republican be elected. So I still throw my support behind Democrats um, because the actual leftists don't seem as viable a candidate. Uh, I want to stay here. I want to stay here and try to make it better. Sean socialistas o conservadores, demócratas o republicanos, Todos los habitantes de Jackson que pueden permitírselo se plantean la misma cuestión. Irse a vivir a una ciudad que no se desmorone o seguir creyendo en su ciudad y quedarse. Tienen fe en su sistema porque son estadounidenses.